May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've reached day four of the month of Mary by Father Stefano Minelli. Love the lady. Jesus Christ will love you. The greatest saints, those riches and grace and virtue, will be the most assiduous in praying to the Blessed Virgin, looking up to her as the perfect model to imitate and as a powerful helper to assist them, says the great Louis Grignon Marie de Montfort. Today we speak about the subject of death. Death is the door we know to eternal life. Through it one enters another life. Every second after our birth, we are drawing closer to our death. It is a passage we cannot escape from. Hebrews chapter 9 says, It is the destiny of man to die, a destiny that brings with it the mark of original sin. And 1 Corinthians tells us, chapter 15, death is a payment for sin. Therefore, Death is a terrible thing. It is death which shows us bluntly how true God's words are. In Genesis chapter 3, remember that you are dust and unto dust you shall return. But with the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, our Savior, dying in the grace of God is a seal of eternal salvation. For the saints, death is an entrance we know into paradise. St. Paul seemed to shout for joy when he wrote in Philippians chapter 1, For me death is gain. For this St. Thomas More, condemned to die by the heretics, wished to put on his most beautiful and precious clothes on the day of his execution. That's why we should always dress very well for our Sunday best, for the Holy Mass on a Sunday, putting on his clothes, best clothes for the day of his birthday, his passage into heaven. And St. Charles Borromeo, in his painting depicting death, showed a person dying most serenely, tranquilly, calmly. Close by was a beautiful angel with a golden key, perhaps the queen of angels, the mother ready to open the door of heaven. What a grace then to die is a saint. Psalm 115 tells us, precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the faithful ones. We can ponder these philosophical questions in life. When, how, and where the death? Death is the most certain thing, but we do not know when it will be, how it will be, and where it will be. One may die while in his mother's womb, or at the age of 100 years. One may die in his own bed or in the middle of the street. At night we are not sure of seeing the sun again, nor in the morning can we be sure of reaching the evening. We are only sure of this. We do not know the day or the hour, Matthew 25. We ask you the question, does anybody know the time of their departure? Perhaps we could suggest that those on death row and some saints or mystics have known their time, but for the most part, we do not know the time or the hour. As 1 Thessalonians 5 tells us, death will come like a thief in the night. So. Pray and be vigilant, as Christ tells Peter, James, and John in the Garden of Gethsemane. Death will come to us like a surprise, like a thief in the night. Thus Christ, our Savior, emphatically admonishes us in Luke 12. Be on your guard, because the Son of Man will come when you least expect him. When we read and ponder on the second coming, 
Perhaps the second coming refers to the time when our Lord will come to judge us at the point of our death, our particular judgment. We pray in this point that we will have already handed ourselves across to the lady and then she can speak for us, saying the words that we should say in front of our Lord, only Lord have mercy on me, a sinner. How foolish we must be then not to even ponder our departure, our death, our passage into eternity each and every day is a holy thing to consider in your meditation, your death each and every day, not to make us sad as the world thinks. And in not reflecting the world, we somehow resemble, Father Stefano Manelli tells us, we resemble ostriches with our heads in the sand, ignoring the approaching danger. How tragic then is a bad death. How holy is a good death. How tragic a bad death. We will only stand, understand this in eternity. The devil knows how holy it is to think of death and reflect on this reality. For thus he makes the thought of it as something unpleasant keeping us carefree and merry amongst our vices and sins. One day, a lady presented herself before Pope Pius XI while he was on the street and asked him for a personal souvenir. A personal souvenir. Looking at the lady who was dressed with luxury, the Pope bent down, took a lump of dust and placed it on the lady's forehead as in the priest blessing with the ashes on Ash Wednesday, saying the same words as the priest, remember that you are dust and unto dust you shall return. He could not give her a better personal remembrance and souvenir than this. So be always ready for your final moment. We are capable, are we not, of filling our day with work, with amusements, with politics with sports, smoking, television, gossips, etc. We live confused and chained by the tension of how much we will earn, how much pleasure and success. We do not worry at all that meanwhile we are going, we are all going there where everybody else is headed in John 14 to towards eternity. Earthly realities, temporal affairs, and physical health, material things, these are all things that enslave us, that make us sleep in the form of a spiritual laziness, which can be fatal. Jesus Christ reminds us many times in the gospel that we must be spiritually awake and zealous for the heavenly kingdom. In Luke chapter 12, he says, Blessed are the servants whom the master finds awake upon his arrival. To be awake, to be ready above all, means to live always in the sanctifying grace of the Lord and to avoid the deadly mortal sin. Or if you fall in grave sin, to immediately make a true act of contrition with the intention as soon as possible to go to the Sacramental Confession, Saint John Bosco, great Italian saint in the 19th century, told his boys to wake him up even at two o'clock in the morning for confession if they committed a mortal sin. This must be the preoccupation and absolute business of every Christian. Anytime death comes with its Merciless sickle, Revelation 14, it must find each and every one in the grace, in the light, and the grace of the Lord. God's grace is like the oil lamps of the ten virgins in the parable of the gospel. The five wise virgins who brought oil lamps entered the wedding feast with the bridegroom. The five Foolish virgins, on the other hand, instead were deprived of the wedding feast because their lamps 
were without oil, i.e. they had no sanctifying grace. Matthew 25, our Lord admonishes them, knocking at the door, trying to enter paradise without the light of grace. I do not know you, Christ says. This was a terrible answer of the Lord to them, to be on God that the Lord never says these words to you. I do not know you. Instead, let us think of the death of the glorious founder of monasticism, St. Benedict. When he sensed that his time had come, the saintly patriarch stood upright, supported by two monks, remained in that position with arms lifted high in the act of going to meet the bridegroom. What about at the hour of our death? We must obtain the grace of a happy death from Our Lady. Pray always to have the names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph on your lips at the final moment. This is a mark that the Lord wants to save you. Invoke Our Lady for a holy death, Saint Joseph, terror of demons and patron also of a holy death. Remember that the grace of a holy death is a gift from God. Always pray each and every day for perseverance, the grace of final perseverance. This is a gift, the final perseverance and the holy death. This grace is so important that the church asks of this light of grace in each and every Hail Mary you say in the most Holy Rosary. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The now and the hour of our death at some point will coincide. And this will be your point of departure. Blessed is the death of him who has loved Mary. Of him who has invoked Mary. St. Mary Magdalene, Sophie Barat, said that the death of a true devotee of Mary is the leap of a child in the arms of his mother. We repeat, magnificent. If you are handed over to the lady, then when you die, you will leap with joy into her embrace. And Saint Bonaventure Franciscan wrote that to die with the pious invocation of the Virgin Mary is a sign of salvation. What about a beautiful story to end John Bosco and Saint Dominic Savio, Saint Dominic Savio, who died very young, age of 14 or 15, and then he appeared a few days later after his death to Saint John Bosco, and Saint John Bosco asked him this question: Tell me, Dominic, what was the most consoling thing at the hour of your death? He asked Don Bosco to guess. So he started. He said, perhaps it was the thought that you had guarded well the lily of purity. No, Savio said. Perhaps the penances you made during your life, not even those, Dominic Savio said. Then it was a peaceful conscience from any sin. Yes, this made me happy, he said, but the most consoling thing for me at the hour of death was the thought I was a devotee and a slave and handed over to the lady. Beautiful. So hand yourself over to the lady, the Saint Dominic Savio, to secure a holy death. Saint Alphonsus. Marie de Ligori says, Mary, having cooperated in our redemption with so much glory to God and so much love for us, our, lay, our Lord ordained that no one shall obtain salvation except through her intercession. So put these beautiful maxims and stories and thoughts into practice on this fourth day of the month. Offer your Prayers and sacrifices in your day itself for those dying. Father Stefano Manelli says to us that around 300,000 souls die each and every day. Where are these souls going? Some of the private revelations tell us that 
souls are falling into hell like snowflakes. Intercede with charity for these souls to save them, to place them into God's divine mercy. Live also as if today was your last day. Live as though each and every moment was your last moment. If someone says the world will end in five minutes time, then you would continue and say, I will continue on my way to go to the shops, to go to the restaurant, to, to have a meal, to play some sport, recreation, etc. Knowing that you are in the light of sanctifying grace. Read and meditate then finally on the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25. Put all these things into practice so that you too one day, as we said, will leap with joy into the immaculate heart of the mother. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.